My name is Sheila McLeod and I'm Chair of the National Rheumatoid Arthritis Society Network of Volunteer Ambassadors in Scotland. In this film, we aim to offer information on two initiatives in the provision of treatment and care for people in Scotland with rheumatoid arthritis. In September 2016, an initiative called SMART, Scottish Metrics for the Assessment of RA Treatment, was launched. It had been designed by a partnership working group, which included clinicians from the Scottish Society of Rheumatology, patient organisations, NRAS and Arthritis Care, and the pharmaceutical industry, Roche Products. The aim of SMART was to improve the quality of RA management in Scotland by means of collecting, recording and examining information gathered in routine clinic appointments. This system has been in place for a year and in light of experience will be relaunched later this year. So far, only newly diagnosed patients have been included. The second initiative, launched in October, will focus on people with established disease diagnosed for one year or more. Where SMART measures patient outcomes, this is looking for information and views on people's experience of the treatment and care they receive. This will be used as a basis for developing the best possible rheumatology service in line with the wishes, needs and priorities of people with the condition. And how will you register your views? Paper questionnaires will be available in rheumatology clinics from the start of October until the end of December. They will be straightforward to complete, about five to ten minutes, and totally anonymous, so you need not worry that anyone involved in your care can connect your answers to you personally. Questionnaires reflect the views and priorities which people expressed in a survey carried out last year by NRAS and Arthritis Care in Scotland. For healthcare professionals, this is an invaluable way to get essential feedback. We would warmly encourage rheumatology teams to support the initiative as fully as possible. For people with RE, this is a real chance to help shape the service on which we all depend. Results will be used to identify areas of good practice that can be shared across the country and also to highlight patient priorities to managers and policymakers. Do please take the time in clinic to complete the questionnaire and be confident that the information collected will make a difference. Today I have with me a group of NRAS ambassadors, Alison Elder, Siobhan Gallagher and John Payton. We have had RA for a wide range of years, from three upwards to more than some of us would wish to count. We're going to chat through what we think really matters to people like us from our treatment and care. We hope that this may be helpful to you before you come to complete the questionnaires in clinic. So top of everybody's priority list is clinician-patient partnership. Obviously it goes without saying respect for treatment, enough time, that's another issue. We might talk about real two-way communications, shared deciding, planning and carrying through. Mm. What would you add to that, John? Well, what I'd ideally like from my uh, consultant is a, a structured approach to uh, the appointment that I have. So uh, along the lines of um, where are we now? How has your condition been over the last year or so since the last review appointment? Where would I like to be in the next year or so? Um, and emphasis on I the and then how are we going to achieve that over the next year, given not just the drugs, but also other treatments that might be available? And, uh, I, I'm not entirely sure I get that all the time. So I take from that that the key thing is what matters to you, which might not yes. be the absolutely obvious thing in terms of rheumatology outcomes, but might be slightly, yeah. slightly apart from it, slightly individual, yes. and that you would like that to be the starting point. And also you'd like to see a thread running through your treatment and care yes. onwards that you and the clinician pick up together yeah. at the appointment yes. and carry forward. Absolutely. Great. Yes. Excellent. I feel that I have a really good experience with my rheumatology team. We have a great rapport. They are very personal when I go into an appointment, so that makes me feel very comfortable from the outset. 
I One of the key points for me here is time. I feel that they would love to give us more time and we would love more time with them to speak about everything that we possibly can. But unfortunately, that's not the case and we don't have the option. So for me, time really is the key thing. And maybe that emphasises to the need to use the time that there is to the very best advantage. So real, real two-way dialogue, real yeah. listening. Um, great. Thank you for that. I too have a very good relationship with my consultant and the team. I think I get the right information and we make the right decision about treatment and medication. I think I feel I'm the expert in my disease and um, and the other professional. And but with their wealth of knowledge and my wealth of experience, I think we come to the right decisions. So a strong team and good yeah. outcomes. Yeah, great. Yeah. We know that the real cornerstone of our care is self-management mm -hmm. and we're all very enthusiastic about that. But in order to make that work, we need to be both well informed and well supported. And given that there may be up to a year between appointments, it's very important that we can return to the experts at, at points if we identify real problems, say with a flare or, or with drugs or whatever. Um, so access to the experts, both in terms of regular appointments not being uh, cancelled or, or the schedule kind of uh, disturbed and extra appointments if need be or extra contact between appointments. Mm -hmm. Now, I think there's a very varying experience of this across the country. Mm -hmm. um, Alison, what, 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 what do you feel about this? Yes, I feel that um, RE, by definition, is very unpredictable. I think people should be able to access um, a, a rheumatology specialist or a physio or a podiatry, whatever the other professionals are available, between times when they need it. This then can prevent if problems escalating, it doesn't make sense that people have to make appointments for their GP who then have to make a referral to a physio or whatever. It's, you know, it's a long road and I would expect an expensive way of... of and just a clumsy way of, just of clumsy managing our situation. condition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we're agreed that, that, that that's, that's the linchpin yes. of, of good care is that we can indicate when we need some help. And it may be that it's very little help, but it's just a conversation mm, yes. on the phone mm -hmm. that puts us back on track. Yes. So if that's the position, are people across the country clear about how they can get this access? Clearly, um, rheumatology teams want to offer it, but do they make it, and they understand how it all works, do they make it clear to people using the service how they can quickly access help or advice? Um, I mean, in this context, the helpline is an interesting it thing, is. John. You might like to say something about that. Yes. Uh, well, I understand around the country there are different patterns of the uh, provision of a specialist nurse, nurse helpline. Um, and I've heard key NHS people say that the specialist nurses are the jewel in the crown of rheumatology services, uh, but there aren't enough of them. And so specialist helplines don't always exist or aren't always properly um, advertised and that means that one has to scrabble around a little bit to find the way through to the right service that you need. There clearly is I think a bit of anxiety in rheumatology teams yes. that if, if if the helpline were made very clear yeah. that it would be swamped yes. and I think that's not probably the case I think that there's if people have a sense of security that they can get help they may not always be uh, you know seeking it every five minutes but mm. I I think that's such an important yes. service, really, without right. which I don't know how self-management no. really works no, properly. Indeed. That's right. Um, no, I, I think in, in certainly in my experience, it is slightly obscure how to get help when mm. when you need it, and I think that is a that's a disappointing thing. Mm. I think you find that not really the case. Um, um, no, I think too. for myself, it's. I have a very good relationship with my specialist nurse. I can call her any time that I need help and she calls me back within two hours normally. Gosh, that's great. Yeah. Mm. That's yeah. wonderful to hear. Would you like to add anything, Alison? Well, just to, to say, when, when I um, have, get my consultant's letter after my appointment, on the bottom of the letter, I have the contact details mm. for my specialist nurse. The other thing that's on there is a website, uh, the website details of where I can get more information. 
And in terms of, Alison, you mentioned the specialist help from the various experts, the occupational therapist, the physio, the orthotist, the podiatrist, Mm -hmm. whoever. Now, I think it's quite important for for us with established disease to say loud and clear that help from these experts goes on being a very important factor Mm -hmm. and something on which we may depend from time to time throughout our RE journey. Mm -hmm. These are not issues that are sorted in the early Mm -hmm. days Mm -hmm. of the disease. Mm -hmm. And I think there is perhaps a lack of of easy access. And I'd be interested to hear from you whether you are, are... are offered or whether somebody in an appointment runs through a checklist of of these Mm. services and would you be interested or could you benefit Mm. or do you have to ask or indeed if you ask can you access them how how do you find it works well I I certainly move from one place to another for my rheumatology treatment and initially uh, when I was diagnosed certainly I was given a full range of um, information about what services I could access and and what they did, mm. um, but moving again to another service uh, when I was more in established disease mm. and arriving without having gone through the first mm. section, I, I suspect. I have been never given the information that I um, knew really to be able to take advantage of uh, the fact that my uh, disease is progressive and it's been oh, moving around my body and doing yes. different things to me, yes. and I need different and we're things. Time. Over time. Indeed. Mm-hmm. So, so I haven't had that transparency. Mm. And and Alison and Siobhan? Um, I've been very fortunate that in the last three years I've not actually needed to see any other specialist out with my nurse and consultant, so that's been very good. I think Siobhan's point is that Siobhan, fortunately, won't know much about podiatry. (laughs) It's not something you need (laughs) in the first instance, you know. So there, there there is a very good reason that these services have to be flagged up and offered to people with established diseases. Mm. If you don't know that they're out there, you're not going to ask. But we're probably more than average ready to ask, yes. whereas many people are hesitant to, yeah. to yes. ask. Yes. So it would be good to think that that the information on what might help and how it might help yes. was made very clear yes. up front mm. and, and offers of, mm-hmm. of, of support given. Mm. So back to the important topic of self-management and one of the really essential things to allow us to self-manage is the best possible information. What kind of information are we really talking about? Well, first of all, clinical information, I guess, our, our, our clinical records and an indication of how the disease, how the course of the disease is going. Um, are we given good information on that when we need it? Are we offered um, leaflets, web links? Are we offered other resources, training sessions, for instance, in self-management or in fatigue management? Mm-hmm. And what about signposting mm-hmm. to outside sources of help, like patient organisations, like, of course, NRAS or local authority classes or all manner of other sources? Mm-hmm. So what, what what's our experience here? John, you start us off. Okay, um, well... I agree with you, self-management is so important and it's not, um, it is for yourself, not by yourself. So you actually require uh, information from other places, such as your clinicians and and so on. I find sometimes the the range of information is quite inconsistent, so between primary and secondary care, if you like, GP Mm -hmm. and and consultant. But there are places to find information. So uh, I like to keep track of the blood um, scores, if you like, over, over time. And I think you and I have come across the uh, Disease Activity Score uh, app for a smartphone where you can actually record how your joints are doing yeah. and uh, how you're feeling that day. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and over time, you can keep a record yourself. Yeah. Um, but that does require you get the initial information from your yeah. uh, GP very yeah. often. Yeah. Um, and that's sometimes not as easy to find no. as, uh, as it could be. Yeah. Uh, but yes, I think you know it, it is so important to get that information. Yeah. As to non-clinical information, um, you, you mentioned lo- local authority courses and so on. Um, I've never actually been signposted to those, but certainly online from one or two of the RA 
organisations. They've suggested, for instance, uh, Tai Chi being a good thing for, mm-hmm. for exercise and keeping the joints moving, and I've certainly taken advantage of that in the past. But none of that has come, <coughs> you're saying, Not from the from, team, from the team yeah. who might lighten their own load up to yeah. a point by, by, by pointing us yeah. in the direction. For instance, the information that comes from patient organisations like NRAS, which is so good, and I think we, we all to find that, 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 if you like, nicely complements what the clinicians might yes. might choose to tell us and might feel we should yep. we should know. No, I think it's certainly a key to being able to, to figure out your next step to self management. Yeah. Um I as far as information goes, I was given leaflets when I was newly diagnosed, which would have been three years ago now. Mm. Since then I've kind of looked for myself. Um John had said the DAS um, app, that's been a real help because that gives mm-hmm. you an overview of your week that you've had mm-hmm. um, and even the month, it can give you an overview of the month you've had. So I've found that extremely helpful. That must be particularly helpful if you're, say, starting a new treatment yes, and you can monitor how you think yeah. it's working for yeah. you and report back, yeah. yes. which allows yeah. the kind of shared decision-making what about you, Alison? How do you <clears throat> well, I think about this? getting the correct information is vital, as we mm. said. There is so much nonsense out there online, on social media, etc. Um, there's wonder cures, there's you know, mm. all sorts of miracles available <laughs> every day <laughs> in a magazine or online. And I think so, therefore, I think it would be useful if our, um, our health team could give us reliable sources. Of information that we can then uh, look up for ourselves online. I think it would be very useful. So are we saying that we would welcome it if our healthcare professionals in the team moved a little bit out of the clinical zone, a little bit further out of the clinical zone yeah. than perhaps they do, simply to support us in using yes. a wide range mm-hmm. of of different materials that would help us to self-manage? Yeah. Yes. I think so. If I can add, I think it doesn't only apply to the the person with RA, it also applies to their carers and relatives. Yeah. It's very important yeah. for them to have yes. that information yes. too, and yes. they're very often excluded from that. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I would to do the kind of background reading that helps... And to reassure them. Yes. Um, yeah. you know. yes. no. uh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Perhaps what anchors our care, as we're, as we're kind of discussing it, is the review appointment that we would hope, that we would expect to have once a year, either with a consultant or with another member of the team, perhaps the nurse specialist, which has quite a, an ambitious target, if you like, an appointment once a year, which offers the chance to discuss every aspect of our condition and care, any other issues in our health picture, including, of course, um, comorbidities that we know, sadly, mm-hmm. cluster alongside mm-hmm. long-term rheumatoid arthritis. So really an exploratory interview which would let us bring out a whole range of things and we might, in that context, wish to, to discuss personal and intimate matters. I don't know whether the extent to which people feel comfortable doing that. Now, this review appointment would has an excellent function really of coordinating and lacing together any other care and making sure that nothing is missed in the process. So invaluable. How does it work in practice? Alison? For me, I have a very good um, appointment, usually annually, but it is definitely clinically based. Mm. We never discuss comorbidity at all or um, any other types of treatment mm. or support. And Siobhan? Um, I personally feel every appointment I go to is a review appointment, but not as in depth as what we're talking about. Yes. Um, I think for myself, because I am at the, the start to what the rest of you are, I've not had the opportunity. I'm still trying to get stable on the medication I'm mm-hmm. on. So mm-hmm. I've not been at a stage where I have mm-hmm. to do a review, a holistic review. Yes. Um, but I do feel now getting to over three years, I would benefit from that. Similarly, um, I, I've obviously had reviews, but uh, it has mainly been clinical information that's been mm-hmm. shared. To be fair, I think quite a lot of the testing can reveal 
the, the possible comorbidities. Mm-hmm. But I would prefer to talk about yes, it. Yes, yes, um, observation. And to give, a, give an opening to discuss it. Yes. Which doesn't occur very much. Yes. And you mentioned the internet of things, sex and so on. It's, yes. Uh, emotions are, are common to us all. Yes. And I know there are booklets about that, uh, and that produces quite a good one, but um, it's it's not discussed as no, such. No. By the, by the well, I've certainly, in 25 years, never been asked by, and, and I believe I've been very well looked after in many, mm. many ways, but but I have never been asked how I felt, how I was coping, um, just how I was managing mm. the kind of pretty ghastly upheaval yeah. in in life. So, so, no, I would say that there is a kind of a, there is a little bit of a kind of clinical boundary yes. on it, and yeah. and I think we would all feel that it would benefit from just ca- kind of opening out a bit. And certainly, mm. the terms of that we understand by by, by sorry a, a review appointment yes. do suggest yes. something wider and something valuable. Alison, you mentioned work, and I think this is such an important yes. topic because we we know. I mean, there's so much evidence that working if one can continue to work mm. alongside having a chronic condition is beneficial in almost every imaginable way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And clearly the rheumatology team have an important role in this as as an, an advice point, I think. Mm-hmm. And perhaps in opening up the idea mm-hmm. with people who are consulting them that they shouldn't come to any hasty decision about work, especially if they are in the early stages mm-hmm. of the condition and feeling ghastly. Mm-hmm. So, so tell us a bit about your experience. Yes, I've been quite fortunate. I, I think, first of all, the uh, rheumatology team have acknowledged I work and therefore have always tried to accommodate me with appointments. I do believe in my heart that work is a wonderful distraction and therefore a wonderful painkiller. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And being active and being out with people and socially, it really takes your mind off. Yeah, Indeed, yeah, yeah. and for so many yes. people, it's an essential of of yes. of, of surviving yes, um, is, uh, and supporting themselves yes. and their mm-hmm. their families. And Siobhan, you've obviously got experience. Yes, this. so I currently still work full time. Um, I have a baby as well, so it was very difficult at the start to understand mm-hmm. and how to manage working along with having a baby. It was very difficult. Um, one of the really key things that I done when I was newly diagnosed was take my manager to one of my consultant appointments. Brilliant. Um, that really made her understand, you know, if I was feeling sick or I was feeling down, that would be the reason why. Mm-hmm. Um, and it really opened her up to understanding what it's about. Mm-hmm. It was the first time we had anyone within our work environment that had this chronic condition. So it was really, really helpful for her to understand the other side of it and not just mm-hmm. my side of it. So that was one of the key things that I've done that will be one of the best things I think that I've done when it comes yes. to work. All in all, I think from my RA team, they are more keen to get me to work. Mm. They are, you know, how are you feeling? How are you at work? What can we do to make it better? Um, that. There's it's obviously so equipment as well for my job that I can get to make it mm. easier. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I would say these are all advantages if you do want to work. I What I would say is that we're really welcoming these big, big developments and big improvements in the whole attitude to, to having chronic conditions and managing to remain in work or in something yes. like it in active yes. active life. Very different indeed from from 25 years ago or so yeah. when I was diagnosed, when one could really slip out of yeah. working life almost by default. But it's, it's just terrific to see how things have improved and we would thoroughly applaud that. That completes what we have to say for now. Thanks very much for watching this film. We hope it's been helpful. Do please look out for the questionnaires in clinic and take the time to complete one. It really will be your chance to help make the rheumatology service in Scotland the very best it can be. Thanks.